Welcome to the Circuit Python Show. I'm your host, Paul Cutler. This episode, I'm joined by Liz Clark, also known as Blitz City DIY. Liz is a Massachusetts bass maker who dabbles in electronics, music tech, 3D printing, Circuit Python, and anything else that looks interesting that day. When her soldering iron is cooling, you can find her with her cats Winnie and Harriet. Liz, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Many of the projects and learn guides that you've shared are music related. What is your music background? Uh, so I started playing piano when I was a kid. There was um, a program in the Parks and Rec department that um, that's how I started. And then uh, as a teenager, I picked up guitar, um, taught myself, and I was in bands. And then uh, I was coming up in bands just as MySpace started being a thing. And that became uh, like the thing for bands to record more, whereas before it was you wouldn't necessarily go do that. Um, so uh, it's really expensive to get studio space, especially when you're um, a teenager. Uh, so that's when I started getting into recording audio. Um, and then I found I liked actually liked that a little bit more than playing in bands. Um, so that's why I decided to study in college. Um, and that's how I got into MIDI and everything like that. So that's kind of been my music journey. Okay. So you're studying music tech in college. Is that when you first started to... to become a maker and get into that community as well yeah so uh i've always made stuff like um i've done sewing and knitting things like that um my family really into things like that too uh but as far as like electronics and coding like i didn't know that was really a thing um until college uh and while i was in college i it felt risky to be majoring in music uh just because you know you hear things like oh you'll never be able to get a job and things like that so I wanted to try to like expand my skills um and that's when I found out about Arduino this is like 2011 2012 uh and I saw that folks were doing like DIY music tech projects like MIDI things or robot instruments um so I attempted to do a little bit with Arduino uh but again I had zero coding background um you know folks will talk about like using Macs and stuff in school like I never never did that <laughs> so it was a steep learning curve with really no guidance so I didn't do too much with it um but I it was something I always wanted to explore more of um so after I graduated and um I did get a job and everything I wanted to get back into doing more DIY things and that's when I started my YouTube channel um as kind of a way to um not get stuck into just doing a grind of like going to work coming home um kind of keep my brain sharp and that's when i started um diving into arduino and really learning it and uh eventually figure python and all the other projects i've done okay so how did you make the the jump from arduino which is you know mostly c-based to circuit python which is completely different yeah so again not too much coding experience so i I barely understood what I would be doing with Arduino. I really couldn't tell you why my code would be working. I would just be like trying a bunch of things. Uh, and then Cir when CircuitPython came out, uh, I was curious about it because I knew that, you know, Python uh, would get used on Raspberry Pi and I dabbled like a little bit with that, but again, didn't really understand how it was working. Um, so, but Adafruit had all these libraries for CircuitPython for stuff and the CircuitPython Essentials Guide uh, that Katni did, um, that kind of went through everything, I started to understand a little bit more, and it, I understood what the code was doing, which was a big game changer for me, as basic as that sounds. Um, and then that's when I started trying to do slightly more complicated projects with it, and uh, now that's just my go-to for everything. Yeah, you hit on a key point. Python, it's all about the readability. Um, it, it makes it so much easier to read than some of the other programming languages out there. And now that I've worked with Python so much, like other programming languages will make sense to me. Like I just finished up a project with processing, which is Java based. And I was a little nervous at first because I hadn't done Java before. And I am slightly, um, you know, scarred from the Arduino experiences <laughs> um, uh, and not being able to understand. But I picked it up a lot faster than I oh, had. That's great. So I think, um, that's important too. Uh, with if people are just getting started coding, start a circuit Python, then it might help them to understand other 
uh, program line down the road. You mentioned your YouTube uh, channel, which is Blitz City DIY. Is is there a story behind the Blitz City DIY name? Yeah. So when I was starting a channel, I wanted it to be a name that uh, would kind of last and also be unique. I've been in a lot of bands and done the whole coming up with a band name thing. So I kind of approached it that way. So it's kind of a, a reference to a couple different things. Um, the Blitz comes from uh, Blitz Creek Bop by Ramones and uh, It's Blitz, which is out by the AAS. Um, and then City, uh, I liked that uh, because of the idea of like a collective um, like a group. I didn't know if maybe I'd um, you know, work with people down the road or and also I've always been really uh, community focused um, and then the DIY just to kind of give it some context uh, so it all kind of roots from um, DIY punk aesthetic um, that's kind of where the, the name grew out of Love it. So you also mentioned um, when you were talking about Arduino uh, robots who play instruments and you built a xylophone tell me about the xylophone Yes so I that was actually the thing that I originally wanted to build in college when I got when I found out that that was a thing people were doing, um, but I did not have the skills at the time. Um, uh, I played the mallet stuff in high school and college because uh, I I showed up to the band room and I didn't play any of the band instruments, but because I played piano, uh, the band director said, well, xylophones and piano sticks. Um, <laughs> and so I played that bit. I've always really liked the sound of that and um, percussion instruments too. So I had... Um, the glockenspiel um, from there and I just thought it'd be so cool to have it be able to play like automated music from MIDI because the the only thing about um, mallet instruments is you're limited to how many mallets you can have um, and so you can play four but it's really hard uh, and you also it's hard to do stuff really fast and everything so the idea of making an acoustic instrument that can play stuff that a human necessarily wouldn't be able to very easily. So that was kind of my inspiration for it. Um, and uh, with CircuitPython, uh, and it made it a lot easier. Um, so you've also shared in, in a past interview that a MIDI arcade is a good starter project for someone looking to get started with MIDI. Yeah, so MIDI is this kind of standard way um, that started up in the 80s uh, of having um, musical instruments uh, communicate with each other digitally. Uh, so it's actually, it stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. So for MIDI, um, there's really good library support now with both Arduino and CircuitPython. Um, back when I was starting, which what held me up a bit was uh, there wasn't, and it was, you had to do weird stuff with Audrey or anything like that. Um, but the CircuitPython library, especially, um, is really plug and play. Uh, and Basically, it makes it so that your microcontroller just interfaces through USB. There's other ways you can do it too, but the easiest way for someone to get started is USB. And you can just have simple things like a button input or a potentiometer, and you can control either software or hardware synth um, because it's sending these MIDI messages, and you can code it to fit your needs. So when you code the notes, it's actually sending it right back. If Let's say I had an electric piano or a keyboard plugged in. It would send the notes back to the keyboard, and the keyboard, it would sound like it's playing the actual notes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then um, how, do, how does it work on a computer? Do you need like a digital audio workstation to capture those? So you can use a digital audio workstation like Ableton or um, Pro Tools or Reason. Uh, then there's also um, like little programs that can kind of read the notes back to you almost like a serial interface one that i really like is called midi berry um and it just makes it I, that's what i usually use when i'm building a new midi project because it just it'll tell you exactly what midi notes you're sending um and that way you know you can have the REPL in moo tell that to you but to actually see that the midi messages are truly going in um to another program is important and you can have um like a software system there also play back the note or um be affected by the different messages because you can also do things like pitch bend or modulation. Stuff. Okay. 
tell me about the MIDI arcade project that you wrote a learn guide for. Yeah. Um, so MIDI arcade fighter is a collab that I did with uh, Nayores and he designed the case and it kind of came from a need he had, which is why, um, DIY MIDI controller I think are so exciting. Um, he does a lot of finger drumming and he will take the time to map the different um, sounds as DAW to uh, the MIDI controller. And so he was like, it'd be really cool if you could design them like on the controller, um, kind of on the fly. And so that's why on that particular uh, MIDI fighter, and there, there was a company that used to make um, things called MIDI fighters, um, and it was these arcade button things, and um, it's kind of become like its own genre of MIDI controllers. Um, and so for our version, there's a little screen with a five-way joystick um, where you can adjust the MIDI notes um, on the fly so everything can be mapped like live. Uh, and then someone in the community actually made a addition to the code that you could store MIDI mapping in a JSON file and oh, kind of call them up that way, which is really cool. Um, and that's one reason why I love Learn Guides. You can kind of put like this kind of basic version of the code or basic, and then people can build on it. Um, Cause that's totally something like that would have been awesome to do, but to then see someone in the community take it from there is really awesome too. And the reason why that's, I think a good starter one is I think most folks, when they want to start with MIDI, they just want to get, a note going somewhere and that project does that and it also shows you how you can have stuff lighting up because we've got uh, lights on the arcade buttons and also that additional thing of the midi note mapping um, i think is is helpful for folks because you can either take the really basic stuff and crib it to your project or you can kind of build on that hi it's paul I'll get you back to the show in just a moment. Thanks for listening. If you like what you're hearing, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment that you subscribed. For other ways to support the show, visit circuitpythonshow.com support. Now, back to the show. You just finished a MIDI learn guide, um, a deep dive into MIDI for the Adafruit learn guide system. What were some of the key takeaways from that? So when uh, PT brought up the idea of the guide, um, kind of MIDI for makers. Um, I wanted to write it almost for myself, like five or six years ago. <laughs> and I just thought of like, what was I looking for with no background knowledge on how to get started? So um, there's all sorts of information, like what it is, how it works, but then also like what boards work. Um, with CircuitPython and Arduino and the different types of MIDI communication because there's USB MIDI. There's also MIDI over UART, uh, which is serial communication. That's when you see those big chunky like five pin connectors. That's how that's working. There's also Bluetooth MIDI. Uh, so just kind of explaining how that all works. Uh, and then I wanted to have three examples for MIDI in, which is sending MIDI messages into a destination and also MIDI out, receiving uh, in communication. So there's an example for a quick little keyboard, um, having POTS control things. Uh, there's also uh, showing how to convert um, MIDI UART to USB um, because you can you can do that with CircuitPython and Arduino. But and all the examples are in CircuitPython, uh, so folks can just use that library and just kind of go with it. I thought it was a great guide. It actually inspired me to go get our old electric piano that we've had in storage out and, and bring oh, it down near my office um, and trying to figure out what kind of projects I can start to do with MIDI because, you know, I, I need another project on my list. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, I'm hoping it will be a good resource for folks and uh, it won't, it'll, it'll save someone from having to have like 15 tabs open um, when they're, when they're just getting started. Sure. So what is, what, what is your music set up like at home? Uh, so actually, I can change. My... Um, so I've got uh, this synth shelf um, that I built during the pandemic uh, because I started getting into Eurorack and uh, other things. Um, and uh, I've got Eurorack on top, um, pocket operators, and... Uh, robot xylophone that we talked about on the, the bottom. You know, 
here. Uh, and then going down, I've got a mixer and my um, USB audio interface uh, for mic inputs. Um, and then to my right is uh, my guitar setup, so my amps and things like that. And behind me is actually used to be where the synth, synth shelf was. Um, unfortunate naming. Uh, <laughs> and it, it's where the pandemic seeming to possibly be getting better and as a result having folks over for dinner more often, hopefully. Um, I thought it'd be better to get my table cleared off. So now everything is kind of in one spot, which is nice. Um, before I was a little bit disjointed. Um, but uh, I've really come to love Eurorack and synth and the uh, people are doing a lot of really cool stuff with open source and synthesizers like um, Thea Flowers, Winterbloom, she has some sort of Python based modules. Um, so there's a really cool overlap, I think, with um, synthesizers, sort of Python music tech happening right now. So that's kind of why I got into that. And for those who might not know, what is Eurorack? Uh, Eurorack, um, it's these different, um, they call them modules. Um, and you'll see them, they're like these little kind of PCP things with um, uh, circuit guts on the back and you rack them up. And basically it's, you got to think of them as like little pieces of a large synthesizer. So you're taking these modules and building a, basically your dream synth. Um, and so there's all these filters and oscillators and things like that. Um, it can get upsettingly expensive, so I try to keep it as minimal as possible. And also, youth market is the way to go. Um, but it's it's really fun. It's it's you patch everything with these little cables, so you're almost kind of building these little musical circuits. Um, so. If you think about like if you were gonna blink an LED with a microcontroller, you have the wires to the resistor and the LED. It's similar to patching a synth voice on your rack. You know, you have your oscillator, you have your filter, you have your PCA, PCO. It's really cool. So it's it's a way to kind of keep it uh, like a creative uh, musical experience, but also like technical. And they have a similar community as I think we'd find in CircuitPython, which is very open, very open source oriented. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, the corners that I've been in, at least, have been very open um, and open source. And people are really into building their own modules, too. Um, and I I hear a lot, um, even from Thea, that like people ask, like, well, I know you have this module, but do you have a kit? Like, people will want the kit over a fully built module. Um, Interesting. Want to do it with their hands. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, before we wrap up, I have a segment that I call Turn the Tables, where I've been asking all these questions. Now you have a chance to ask me a question. All right. And my question for you is, what is your favorite CircuitPython library? Oh, um, that's a good question. I Right now I've been playing with my Pi Portal. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm cheating because it's a whole class, right? It's not necessarily a library. But the Pi Portal's got those tools built in where it can actually read a JSON file, take an image, put it through Adafruit IO, and give you the bitmap back. So that's what I've been playing with. So it's not I'm, so I'm cheating. It's I'm not really answering your question, but um, that's currently my new favorite thing to play with is just trying to feed it. What can I feed this class, and what do I get back? Excellent. Where can people find you online? Uh, so I post on Twitter and Instagram as with DIY. Um, I also have a website that has not been updated in a very long time, uh, blitzcdiy.com, uh, and also blitzcdiy is the name of my YouTube channel. Uh, and I have also recently uh, begun working full-time with Adafruit, uh, so I'll be having a lot more guides and um, hopefully videos, too, uh, with them as well. That's great to hear. So speaking of Adafruit, you're about to start a new project or prototype. What microcontroller are you going to reach for first? Uh, recently it's been the Feather, but specifically the RP2040, um, because it has the Stemma QT connector. Uh, and when I'm prototyping, even if it's a Stemma QT, I do still like to have that base of the breadboard. Um, so I like to have that put into the breadboard and then, um, you have the ability to do the Stemma, which is really nice. So that's kind of my go-to. And the Feather, too, when you're prototyping, it usually has enough pins, possibly more than what you need. So, um, that's... 
That's a great pick. It's amazing how far the RP2040 has come in just a year. Yeah, that, that was a, a very nice, I think, kind of jumpstart to um, microcontrollers and kind of the electronics community. And I think it also got a lot more people using Python on microcontrollers uh, because when it initially was released, there was circuit Python and MicroPython support um, and the Arduino core wasn't quite ready. So I think it got people to explore a little bit. Which really cool. uh, that's a great call out. Liz, thanks for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Great talking to you. Thank you to Liz for being on the show. You can find Liz's YouTube channel at Blitz City DIY. For show notes, transcripts, and to support the show, visit circuitpythonshow.com or follow the show on Twitter at CircuitPyShow, that's Circuit P-Y Show. I'm your host, Paul Cutler, and I'll be back next episode. Don't forget to hit subscribe and stay safe.